Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast, Anti Viral Edition. So, in the last podcast, I talked a lot about the whole use of the word viral on the internet, and in particular on YouTube videos and in the titles, and how I felt that that word had really kind of been rendered useless just by overuse. Now, interestingly, and I don't know if this is coincidentally or ironically, I'm not sure which is the more appropriate word in this instance, but that video got more views, or listens, but probably views, than anything I've done in quite a while. And in fact, I got comments from viewers, subscribed viewers, who told me they are subscribed and they have notifications turned on and have not gotten any notifications about my videos in months. I had one person say, I thought you quit. Well, I did for a while in October, but I've been back. But she said this is the first video that she got notified on in months because maybe the word viral was in there. So now I'm kind of torn. Additionally, as is often the case in my life, I will cover a topic in the podcast and then serendipitously, I, I love being able to use that word, serendipitously, something else will happen in my life that either mirrors what I talked about or reinforces it or something like that. And in this case, what happened is I just started reading, actually listening to the audiobook of The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. And when I finish that, I will do a book review of that on my other channel, Lean Body Mind. But I'm listening to the intro to that, which is read by the author, the intro is. And the author's voice, actually, this is a total aside, reminded me a lot of Dr. Eric Westman, both in terms of just the, the quality of his voice and his cadence. It was probably about oh, 20% slower than Dr. Westman speaks, but he had that same sort of calming, just generally pleasing tone of voice. But he got to talking about technology and the internet, and he used the term viral. And he used it like a virus, not like viral video, oh, everybody's got to watch this, it's lighting up the internet, but like a disease, viral, that sort of viral. And I'm going to read a little chunk from that book, and hopefully uh, Mr. Green does not get bothered by me reading a chunk of his book. I will link to the book down in the description below. But he says, look at the aggression that is now displayed in the virtual world, where it is so much easier to play out our shadow sides without repercussions. Notice how our propensities to compare ourselves with others, to feel envy, and to seek status through attention have only become intensified as our ability to communicate so quickly with so many people. And finally, look at our tribal tendencies and how they have now found the perfect medium to operate in. We can find a group to identify with, reinforce our tribal opinions in a virtual echo chamber, and demonize any outsiders, leading to mob intimidation. Hmm, that feels like it hits awfully close to home here in the keto world, where I think there is an awful lot of tribalism and, and, and the behavior that he described. I'm sure it exists in other areas, too. I'm sure if you have a barbecue group or a knitting group or something like that, there's similar behavior. But it's just it's interesting that just days after recording what I recorded in that podcast, this this appears in my life. So anyhow, it's going to be interesting to read this book or listen to this book. And as I said, I will do a review on my other channel of it. But I also got to thinking what another fun thing might be for us to do here in the Serious Keto community is see who can come up with the best clickbait video title name. And, and leave it down in the comments below. So just to, to kind of take a few things off the table, or, or potentially give a few tips. I think there's uh, some common things that we see. There's like, nutritionalists hate me for this one simple trick. Or I ate nothing but the one ingredient viral keto lasagna recipe for 30 days. You won't believe what happened. So go ahead, put a comment down below with your best sort of clickbait title. Maybe put it in quotes. That way I don't think it's just something you're randomly saying to me. I'll know that it's part of the clickbait contest. And I don't know if it's going to be a contest or not. I, I suppose if I see one that is just mind-blowing, maybe there'll be some sort of prize or something that I'll send to you. I don't know. No promises. Additionally, last week I talked about the whole announcing that you're unsubscribing thing. And... I used the word Karen, 
as part of that. And I, I apologized in advance and I think after the fact that I was doing it. And I was pleased to see that so many women named Karen had a sense of humor about it. They took it just fine. There were a couple though that didn't. They, they got a little bit bent out of shape and uh, you know said, well, what if you woke up tomorrow and Steve was the new name for jerk or something like that. And I replied, well, you know, I've got a pretty good sense of humor, so I'd probably take it in stride. And I started thinking, imagine it's back in the 1930s. You're just hanging out. You're a chill dude. Your name's Adolf. You don't live in Germany even. You're here. You're listening to the Glenn Miller band on the radio. And, uh, you know, you're not starting any world wars. You're not... Um, not doing all kinds, you know, starting a master race or anything like that, wiping out millions of people. And then suddenly you wake up one day and it's time to change your name. I think that's worse. Now nah, I'm not even going to go there. Also last week, I displayed a couple of times a, a bit of a verbal tick that I have. And I have a few of them. There are, there are words that for whatever reason, when I pronounce them, they're not normal. And I don't, I don't hear them as I say them usually. Last week it was sorry, but it tends to come out rather Canadian sounding for me. It's more like sorry. And I did that twice. So that's one of the ones, you know, I'm sorry. It just, that's, I, like I said, rarely do I hear it when I say it, but then I get into the editor as I'm editing the video and I hear these things. So some of the others that, that I commonly do milk instead of milk. So the white cow beverage that, uh, that some people drink, I, it comes out milk instead of milk when I say it. I also kind of lean into the L's on the yellow part of an egg. It comes out yolk, not yolk, like k. there's a, and it's not, also it's not yolk, but it's somewhere in between. There's just sort of a, a soft subliminal L in there, yolk. It's just, it's like right back here in my throat. The other one that I don't pick up when I'm saying it, but I always hear it in the video editor is across. So rather than across, like I went across the street, it comes out, I went across the street. I don't know why. It just, I can't control it. That's how it comes out. And as I got to thinking about some of these words, I remembered as, as a child, and even as a teenager, one of my best friends, Jim, he could not say church. It was church. Weird, because he could, he could handle the CH at the end of the word. It wasn't tert. He could use CH any other time except for church, which was always church. And this went on, I, you know, I think up until he was about 14 or 15, he was finally able to correct that. So maybe at some point I will be able to correct Sorry, yolk, across, and milk. Over the past couple of weeks, I have seen some interesting stuff happening with the comments on my videos as well. Not in terms of what people are saying, but what's happening to comments. So I'm seeing a lot more comments show up in my held for review bucket. So there is a tab within the comments section. There's published and then there's held for review. And if you go into held for review, it flags certain types of comments, whatever uh, YouTube, I guess, deems offensive. Or I can also put in words that I don't want to see show up. But, you know, and terms like racist terms will show up in there. Idiot, for whatever reason, will show up in there. But, you know, not, not profanity for, for some reason. That, that seems to slip right through. But everything that has shown up in my held for review bucket in the last few weeks has been just completely benign. I look at it and I, I don't know why in the world it wound up there. And then I'll approve it and it will show up in comments, regular published comments, but then often moments later it will disappear entirely. I have also seen comments, I'll open up my phone, I'll be sitting upstairs on the couch and I'll see a comment and I'm like, ooh, I want to reply to that, but I want to give it a you know, thoughtful typed out reply. Let me head down to my office and let me type it out. And I go and I pull up comments and it's gone. So there is something odd, I think, going on with YouTube. I think oftentimes there's something odd going on with YouTube, but lately with comments. So if you ever leave a comment and then it's deleted, I didn't do that. 
I, it is rare, 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 rare that I will delete a comment. And usually when I do, it's because someone double posts. And I think some, you know, somehow they just double clutched or double tapped or whatever it was. And just to kind of keep the comments clean, I'll get rid of that. But if someone puts something in that's nasty enough and offensive enough and trolling enough that deserves to be deleted, I'm probably just going to ban that person from the channel rather, you know, and just be done with them. So that's why I don't typically delete comments. So if you do see one of your comments deleted, it's entirely okay to let me know about it, but don't accuse me of deleting it because I didn't. So the other day I was at Costco doing my usual Costco thing, which means hanging out by the keto bread waiting to be recognized and wasn't. So then I went on to do my shopping and as I got near the big refrigerated and frozen section, very often there will be pallets or sort of um, islands of product out there that are, are themed. Like there may be a grilling theme. So there'll be some charcoal and some smoker chips and barbecue sauce and spatulas, that sort of thing. Or maybe it's all coffee themed. There have been a couple of times where I've seen four different keto products out there on the island. But as I'm walking past, I see this product in a yellow bag and it said bacon nutty. And I'm thinking, so like the N in there is sort of the, um, it's like bacon and nutty are conjoined twins joined at the N. Bacon nutty. And I thought peanut butter and bacon, I think is a, a wonderful combination. I used to love eating peanut butter and bacon sandwiches. I don't know if Elvis did that too. I think he had banana in his also, but I would do peanut butter and bacon. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, a peanut butter bacon snack. I am, I gotta, I gotta check the macros on this. And as I'm approaching it, I see that there's a cartoon mascot or, or something like that, that is a dog. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I guess I don't think anything of it. Uh, you know, it's a dog mascot. You know, the, the Pillsbury Doughboy is a, a mascot. It didn't dawn on me until I grabbed the bag and was looking at the back of it and looking to see where the carbs were that this is actually a dog snack. And I would be lying if I said I didn't think about still buying it. But I put it back. I would be curious to know if any of you have a dog and have bought Bacon Nutty, is it any good? Have you tried it? Because if I had a dog and I bought this, I, I think I would have to try it. So let me know down in the comments if you've ever had Bacon Nutty. For my final topic, at first I was thinking this is men's health, but then it dawned on me that it's not just men, it's men and women as well, but over 50. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this TMI free, so we'll be completely safe. You don't need to plug your ears or stop watching. But I've got a colonoscopy coming up. i got to schedule it, but it's been five years. And when I had my first one at 50, the doctor said, uh, because there's cancer, a history of cancer in my family, that they wanted to check me every five years. So, hooray, it's been five years. And last week, while I was getting some ink touched up at the tattoo parlor, my tattoo artist, who is 52 or 53, mentioned that his doctor is always getting on him about having a colonoscopy and he's afraid. And I, I, I talked to him about it and you know, said, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. Uh, you're under general anesthetic, unless that's something that scares you. But we just, we kind of talked through it and hopefully I assuaged some of his concerns. And the reason I bring that up is because if this is something that you, and I know a lot of my viewers, a pretty significant number of my viewers are over 50, if this is something that you are apprehensive about having this procedure done and you have some questions, if there are some specific things you would like to know about the procedure so I can make a mental note when I go in there and I can come back and answer your questions, let me know down in the comments below. Because although this is a keto channel, I do like to focus periodically from time to time on broader health issues that either affect me or may affect you. So I'm happy to help. I'm happy to be the guy that goes and answers some questions. But that is going to be it for this podcast. It's a little bit shorter this week after the longer one last week. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything else. So yeah, thanks for watching.
Thanks for listening. Thanks for being antiviral.